All right. Well, we'll continue with our not knowing what the outside world looks like because we only have nine more weeks, apparently, and then we're going to be at the end of Aaron's route already. So let's just keep doing that because we don't need to be social in order to write well. Yeah. Okay. Made it to another week. The words are just flowing through us. Ain't even got to worry about nothing. Except another scene! Oh no! Ah, this bright elevator though. I lean against the elevator wall for support and wipe the culminating beads of sweat off my brow. My legs tremble slightly, feeling jelly-like, but aching all the while from my intense jog. Oh my, went outside the box here. Most people wouldn't define 40 minutes of light jogging around a local park as intense, but when you're confined to a desk most of the time and any movement on your part is pretty minimal, it feels like the equivalent of some high-intensity Olympic training torture. <laughs> wow, laying it out like that, I realize how pathetic I am. Jeez. I read online that exercise, jogging in particular, is supposed to release endorphins that make you feel and think better. I've been in a bit of a rut writing-wise. Untrue. We've been writing straight for like three weeks. So I, wrote a, I woke up early this morning, squeezed into some unervingly tight yoga pants, and sought this supposed runner's high. I guess I feel good in a I made a healthy adult decision today kind of way, but I also desperately want to inhale a box of donuts and curl up in bed for the rest of the day. How long will this dull ache saturate my legs? Hours? Days? The elevator emits a ding and its doors slowly slide open with a lurch. My heart rate increases as the sudden fear of being trapped in the elevator enters my mind. One of the doors hadn't opened. But they did open, Amy. Chill out. So good. Still feeling a bit uneasy, I push the thought out of my mind and resolve to file a maintenance request when I get home. Uh, how did I know you were going to be around? As I dig into my hoodie's pockets and search for my apartment key, the anxiety-induced nausea churning within my stomach peaks as I lock eyes with Abigail, who momentarily steps out of her apartment. <laughs> She's laughing and carrying two empty takeout containers. Upon seeing me, her eyes widen and her cheery mood is instantly killed. She stands in the hallway with a deer and headlights look for several seconds, allowing me to hear her companion. <laughs> the laughter carries clearly into the hallway, unmistakably Aaron's. At this point, I'm like, Amy, you should just step in. I know you've only been married for six months. This is unacceptable. Uh, finally regaining her senses, Abigail abruptly spins on her heel and re-enters her apartment without having disposed of the soil takeout container, slamming the door behind her. My knees suddenly feel weaker than they did before, and a chill overtakes my sweaty body as a mass of thoughts culminate and overtake my mind. Why is Aaron in Abigail's apartment? Why didn't he tell me he would be there? Is he meeting her in secret? I mean, she did ask for help with her apartment, but I still don't believe the reasons behind it. What were they laughing about? Me? Were they laughing about me? Probably. And did I see Taco Hut printed on those takeout containers? Did they eat breakfast tacos together? I can't remember the last time Aaron surprised me with breakfast tacos. I love Taco Hut. I want tacos. Hey, how about me? But more importantly, I want Aaron. <sighs> my breathing comes in halting gasps now and a warm tingling permeates my extremities. What's happening? Am I going to pass out? I think I'm going to pass out. Lie down, girl. Lie down. I really feel like I need to sit down and recollect myself, but if Aaron is... God, I can't even think it right now. Uh. <laughs> it's because you had a sneeze coming on, girl. It's cool. We'll move on. Oi. The point is, if I want to catch them in the act, now would be the time before he climbs out of Abigail's window or something. He's not going to do that. What should I do? Don't be secretive. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like I'm on the... Maybe I'm just on my way to a bad end. I don't know. I 
I mean, if they're not up to anything, then they're not up to anything, right? I'm such a suspicious, jealous wife. This is terrible. Acting promptly before I lose my nerve, I stomp up to Amy's door. Amy's door? Abigail's door. Knock loudly. Knock on my own door. After several moments of impatient knocking, Abigail unlocks the door and opens it just a sliver, peering at me through the crack. Oh, Amy! What a surprise! Now's not really a good time. I want to see my husband. I raise my voice so that whoever's inside can hear. Oh, is that Amy? Hey, Amy! <laughs> you were planning something again. See, but I can trust Aaron. Aaron's not doing anything. But he shouldn't be here anyway. Blah. Abigail winces and, with a defeated expression, she opens the door wide and invites me in with a gesture of her arm. Uh, is Professor Task your dad? Because milk on the fridge. Abigail called after you left, saying that her internet went out. She said it was an emergency, and she couldn't wait for her cable provider to come out. Something about a job? I find acting work online, yes. Yeah, so she can't apply for jobs while her internet's out. And the cable company apparently couldn't send someone out for a few days, so she asked me to take a look. What was the issue? You're not going to believe this. Abigail accidentally changed her Wi-Fi password and couldn't remember it. Huh, huh. Wow, I'll never believe that. So I reset her router and was going to reboot her computer and reestablish the internet connection, right? But the sticker that cable companies put on the bottom of the router, you know, the one with the default username and log on, login on it, had been peeled off. I guess Abigail didn't think it was important. So I had to call the cable company and feed them a lot of information so they could look up the SSID and default password and all that. Wow, that's pretty unbelievable. Abigail would have to be really stupid to accidentally do all of that. I shoot her an accusatory glance. She bites her lip and looks away, looking exceedingly bitter. Don't say stupid. She's just uh, technologically inept is all. There's nothing wrong with that. Except when you have to dispose... Dispose? Indispose? When you have to indispose other women's husbands to fix your problems. There's definitely something wrong with that. Amy. Well, I'm just finishing up anyway, so I won't be disposed for much longer. I didn't think you'd miss me since you were out of the house anyway. You could have told me you were going to be here. <sighs> he returns his attention to Abigail's pink laptop and keys in a few things and taps the touchpad a few times. Okay, looks like it's working now. Here, I wrote the default SSID and password on this piece of paper. Don't lose it again, alright? Alright. Abigail lingers on the edge of the living room, looking thoroughly crushed. Much to my relief, this event didn't seem to go the way she planned. Hey, can I take the leftovers home? Sort of like payment? Uh, sure. Whatever. Sweet. Aaron winks at me and forms his hands into two thumbs up. I retrieve the styrofoam container off of the table and exit the apartment with my husband in tow. Well, we got some nachos out of Abigail, so it wasn't all bad. <laughs> when we arrive home, I drop the nachos on the coffee table and ferociously dig in. Hey, slow down. I figured you'd be hungry after your workout, but this is insane. You're going to eat all the calories you just burned. I don't care. My response is muffled by a mouthful of tortilla chips. Aaron grabs my hands, halting my intake. You're eating your feelings. Let's talk about this. Tell me what's eating you. Wait, huh, I made a pun. I wasn't even trying, I swear. I was trying not to laugh at it, it was pretty good. He grins, clearly proud of himself. You're the writer, so usually you're the witty one, but... Oh wait, we were having a serious moment, crap. Why are you so oblivious? What? I don't understand. It's Abigail. She's clearly... But then again, maybe my anxiety is making me paranoid. Amy, tell me what's up. I want to understand, really. But how can I explain this tumultuous jealousy to you when I can't even make sense of it myself? There is one question that Aaron holds the answer to, however. What were you and Abigail laughing about? Uh, you're going to have to be more specific. When exactly? I had just stepped out of the elevator and Abigail was taking empty takeout containers to the dumpster outside. 
Oh yeah, because Taco Hut's to-go containers are big and they weren't fitting in Abigail's trash can. Yeah, yeah, back to the question. What was so funny? We were both just kind of sharing stories of technology snarfus. Snafus. Snafus. She was telling me about a time when she missed an audition with the director over web chat because her internet suddenly went out. But she found out later that it was because she accidentally unplugged her router so she could plug in her laptop to charge. She said that the cable guy who came out to fix it just, like, berated her, and that's why she was hesitant to call the cable company again. She wanted a friend to fix it, someone who wouldn't make her feel stupid. So then I told her about the time we tried to web chat with my dad, remember? We had intended to do an audio call, but dad didn't know how to work the program and he initiated a video call. He wasn't wearing a shirt and he was so mad that we saw him, even though it was completely his fault. I'm still mentally scarred from the experience. And dad still refuses to give web chat a second chance. So yeah, I was just trying to make Abigail feel a little better about herself, that's all. That's actually really sweet of you. Aaron looks at him exasperated. Thank you. Before leaning forward and stuffing a nacho in his mouth, he recoils. Ew, these are soggy. How about I shower and we go get some fresh ones, eh? Aaron raises his arms triumphantly and shouts. Oh yeah. <laughs> no wonder you guys are having financial difficulty. You eat out like two times a day every day. <laughs> guys, get it together though. Alright, let's continue on our way. Ah, I'm glad we just went the direct route and didn't do anything nuts. Alright, I'm gonna make it. By the skin of my teeth, basically. But I'm gonna make it. These words don't suck. So this is cause for celebration. All right. Well, this week I could work on running, I suppose. Let's see. Go for a run, go for a run. Two, four, six, um, eight. Yoga class is really great. Ooh ah, ooh ah. Start. Look at that. 100, 100, 100 oh. Yeah. This is wonderful. We're doing so good. I need to experience as many different things as I can in order to write a good book. I mean, I could work on culture. Or I could just. Do a lot of running and yoga classes, cause we're done. Sorry, Aaron. We're just gonna get to the end of your first ending. <laughs> the end of your first ending. Last week. Do 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 do. Do 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 Play final scene Boop Aaron scene ten My phone alarm goes off and I hurry to quiet before Aaron hears. The clock reads five AM, which is a whole five hours earlier than I usually awake. I have an early meeting this morning with my publisher, but Aaron has the day off and I'd like for him to sleep unhindered by me. Oh, hello. Slowly, I ease out of the queen-size bed and pull the covers up over Aaron's exposed shoulder. After tiptoeing out of the room, I gently shut the door behind me and brew a cup of coffee. Normally, I just eat a granola bar with my coffee and I allow Aaron to make breakfast for himself, but a festive mood overtakes me and I make him an omelette. I leave a note next to the plate, asking Aaron to meet me at the place we first met after he finishes his meal. I figure I should be getting out of my meeting around then, and that's the place I want to break the news to him. What news? Advanced copies of my book are available! Good job, girl! Advanced copies are privately released by the publisher before the book is printed for mass distribution. They're mostly given to reviewers, bookstores, magazines, and libraries as free promotional items. What does this mean? 
Well, it all boils down to a happier and therefore easier to live with Amy, which is something we can all appreciate. Hell yes. With the note finished, I throw on my coat. I hope she put on some clothes before she threw on her coat and zipped out of the apartment, wheeling closer to my future with each step. Oh, wow. Is this a happy ending for us, please? The wind coming off of the ocean whips my hair back and forth and dampens it with a salty mist. I anxiously dig my shoes into the sand and lean back against the wooden bench. Where is he? Is it possible that he somehow missed the note? No, that can't be. It was clearly visible once you entered the kitchen, so Aaron would have had to have skipped breakfast to miss it. Aaron would never skip breakfast, therefore he had to have seen it. Could he still be sleeping? I checked the time on my phone. It's nearly noon. Yeah, it's unlikely that he'd still be asleep. Hey! I was like, bad end. Aaron's voice sends a wave of relief through me, and I turn my head to see him strolling down the boardwalk towards me. Are you cold all the time, man? Like she's in a nice summer dress on the beach, and you've got like a scarf and a sweater all the time. As he draws closer, he throws his head back in greeting. A flashes, in throws his head back in greeting and flashes a smile. Thanks for the omelet. What's up? Ask why he took his sweet time getting here. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, this was our Amy, the entire- I'm gonna save. I think I've made it to the happy ending, because he showed up, and there's, like, one- there's two happy endings, a normal ending, and two sad endings. And I think it, the endings only change by the, uh, the choice at the end, if you've already got, like, the, the happy-ish- you're going towards the happy-ish end. Let's well, just be Amy to the end. What the hell took you so long? Aaron holds up his arms defensively. Whoa, calm down, tiger. What, you on your period or something? Don't even joke about that. That is not cool. Huh. An indignant huff escapes my lips. I'm not bleeding, but you're going to be if you don't answer me. I just slept a little later this morning. No crime in that, is there? You didn't think it was odd that I wasn't in bed next to you? I assumed you couldn't sleep and went to the living room to write. Quit painting me the bad guy, Amy. Anyway, I got up eventually and found the note you left me. After I inhaled that cold omelet, you better believe I hurried over here. <laughs> I feel a sense of relief mingled with guilt. I really have been quick to jump to conclusions lately. Because <sighs> I was told to. I guess the stress of writing this book has put me on edge. Thankfully, it's all behind me now. I guess I had better tell you why I called you here. My hands reach into the tote bag and pull out a glossy advanced copy of my book. Ta-da! Shiny, right? Isn't that gloss killer? Nice! I knew you'd get here eventually, Amy. Or at least I always hoped you would. I know, I know. I've been a bit of a pain lately. Now that's an understatement. Hey! After all the nice things I wrote about you in my book, you're going to act like a jerk? Sorry, remind me of all the great things you wrote about me again? Huh, well, it's a memoir, so I told stories about me, about us, growing up, and how we've changed. But when two people love each other, they work through the change. They don't let their love die, because love is beautiful. It should be defended and fought for. Hmm. Aaron, appearing deep in thought, nods in approval. After a few moments of reflection, he speaks. I know that it's not like before. I'm not as clueless as you think. Work has just been so draining. More draining than I ever anticipated it would be. And when I get home, I just veg out on the couch. I know I haven't been as present as I used to be. I'm disappointed in myself. But... Stop. I place my hand on his arm, startling him slightly. It's okay. Life is hard. I get it. When we were teenagers, we thought school was our bane and nothing would ever be worse. But adulthood had more in store for us than we could ever imagine. We weren't prepared. And let's be honest, getting married so early on might not have been the best idea. Spending a few years adjusting to adult life independently might have left us better prepared to weather married life. But what's done is done. 
I made a commitment and I intend to keep it. Oh, I'm so proud of you. Prepared or not, we're going to grow and get through this thing. I suddenly realize that my words have gotten away from me and I've begun presumptuously speaking for the both of us. At least that's how I feel. My eyes peer into his, awaiting an answer. Aaron clasps my hand tightly and smiles. I completely agree. Some time later. Achievement unlocked. Red roses. I ladle more chicken broth into the bowl and settle back onto the couch. I just arrived home from my book tour a few days ago and I'm fighting a post-touring funk. The disastrous combination of stress, daily handshaking and autograph sessions, and eating nothing but fast food for weeks always leaves me sick. I can't imagine why. Touring is some definitely something I did not miss from the publication of my first book. Worst of all, authors are not paid for this time away. The publisher covers the tab for travel expenses, food, and lodging, but authors are expected to bite the bullet for their time and stress, hoping that all their marketing will pay off later in the form of book sales. So far it hasn't, which isn't boding well for the success of my book. I hear the sound of a key being wedged into the door lock and I glance up at the time on my phone. Is that late already? Where has the day gone? Aaron swings open the door and enters with a large bouquet of roses in hand. Whoa, that no that music though. Hello. Whoa, what's the occasion? No sooner do the words spill out of my mouth than I realize the significance of today's date. Oh no, girl! How could you forget the f your first anniversary? <laughs> I was wondering if this was going to end on their first anniversary. Our anniversary. I completely forgot. I'm so sorry. It's okay. I know you've been busy lately. Despite his reassurance, I can detect a hint of disappointment in his voice. Uh, minus all the wife points from me. Dear, oh dear. <sighs> he hands me the bouquet and comes in for a hug, kissing me on the cheek as he does. Still not feeling well? Is there anything I can do? Do you need me to run to the store for meds? No, it's probably an exhaustion thing. Maybe my immune system has been weakened too. I don't know. I don't think it's like the flu or anything, so no meds required. Thanks. My heart is warmed by his offer, though. He bought me flowers on our anniversary, which I forgot, and now he's offering to take care of me after a long day of work. Don't deserve. How did I end up with someone so thoughtful and understanding? Come here. I stretch out my arms and bring his face to my level, then I kiss him deeply. Thank you for being awesome. I'll try to suck less in the future. Don't say that. No, it's true. I've been so focused on this book that I've neglected you, and I don't ever want to make that mistake again. Do you forgive me? Of course, Amy. I love you. I love you too. Sure, things aren't perfect. I make mistakes. We all do. But we love each other, and we're committed to staying together, and that's all that really matters in the end. <laughs> Ending Red Roses Unlocked. Oh. How cute. What about that ho Abigail, though? <laughs> Did we kick her to the curb yet? It is better to be hated for what you are than to be loved for what you are not. Andre Gide. I forgot about this, these quote things from the, <laughs> from the first game. I love that they kept that in for the second one. Oh, a few years later, because we got... Big blue eyes. We've got the special ending because we're awesome like that. Aaron gives my hand a squeeze as he points to a low flying seagull. It skims the water, becoming a black outline when juxtaposed next to the brilliant orange hue of the setting sun. Being reminded of a similar date, many, many years ago, I give his arm a loving touch and lean in for a kiss. I'm glad you guys are still together all these years later. We enjoy a few moments of tenderness until. Stop! 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 A small girl wedges in between us and peers up at me with eyes that are unmistakably Aaron's. <laughs> I'm sorry! This is, this is weird. Because if any of you remember from the first game, this was- I, I'm pretty sure this was the ice cream girl that was hitting on Lawrence. 
<laughs> I'm pretty sure it's the same sprite. Oh my god, I gotta look that up afterwards, but holy mackerel, I'm 100% sure it's the same girl. It was a foretelling of my daughter <laughs> with Aaron. It was a foretelling that she's gonna hit on Lawrence? Oh no. Don't you do that. That's not right. Ugh. Okay. Quit hogging him! I wanna kiss daddy too! She lifts her arms, bouncing on, bounces on her heels, repeatedly yelling, up, 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 as she does. I lift her and hold her close to her father so that she can kiss him. She opens her mouth wide and places it on his cheek, then pulls away. She's too young to really grasp the concept of kissing yet, and instead acts like a suckerfish when she wants to show affection. We pretend not to hate it. Thanks, sweetie. <laughs> when seeing Aaron wipes her saliva off of his cheek. I'm bored, can we go now? Well, I was thinking that we might go get some ice cream first. Does that sound nice? No, she's gonna hit on Lawrence. Yay, ice cream! She waves her arms frantically in jubilation and wiggles out of my grasp. Once free, she hightails in the direction of the car. Aaron takes my hand again and gives it another squeeze as we follow our daughter to the parking lot. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's gonna be so weird if I go back to Lawrence's route in the first game and it's the same. I'm pretty sure because she looks so familiar. Anyway, she definitely does not have her dad's eyes. They're, they are blue, and we talked about how piercingly silver Aaron's eyes are. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. <sighs> but what happened with Abigail, though, is the real question. We'll never know. <laughs> Theme song, Never Forget Me, by Busara. Oh. Well, Aaron was about as clueless and vanilla as I remembered him from the, uh, the first game. <laughs> Although in the first game I thought it was just because he had amnesia, but apparently that's just his personality. Oh, what about Gwenda? We never did find out if Gwenda was okay from the hospital. Ugh. Ugh. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. So many things. It went by so quickly, though. It's a good thing we've got another happy ending and a normal ending and two sad endings to do, because yeah. Winter Wolves. <laughs> By all means, marry. If you get a good wife, you'll become happy. If you get a bad one, you'll become a philosopher. Socrates. Man, he threw the shade down. <laughs> this game is dedicated to my beloved wife. I wouldn't be doing games if it wasn't for you. Aw, that's so nice. Oh. I'm like, it just started over again. All right. Well, we got our first happy ending, everybody. Well done, us. And we got the special ending, which is also excellent. We did it right at the end. So I hope you enjoyed that. We'll be going to try and do his second good ending now. So I hope to see you over there for those. For that. For the. Ugh. See you over there for that, guys. <laughs> okay, until then, I'll see you later.